Dr. Marty McCary is a professor at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and the Bloomberg School of Public Health, also the author of the great book, The Price We Pay, What Broke American Healthcare and How to Fix It, which is coming out in paperback in the next two weeks. Dr. McCary, great to chat with you again, sir. Good to be with you, Vince. Uh, tell me, if you will, the answer to that question. What is What kind of immunity is conferred upon someone who has COVID and then recovers? Because as I understand it, Nearly 30 million people fit that category in the United States. Yeah, and actually, those are just the people who are confirmed to have been uh, had the infection. It's probably five times higher. It's probably about 150 million people. It's probably half the country that has natural immunity from prior infection. And the studies out of California kind of proved that. It showed that um, 38 percent of Californians had antibodies back in March before the vaccine was really taken off. So about half the country has natural immunity. One of the biggest failures of our current medical leadership is ignoring natural immunity. They, they've given them no guidance. That folks that had the infection, they just tell them to get the vaccine as if they don't already have antibodies. And they demonize them when they're hesitant. And Ron Paul, as you know, who's a doctor, decided not to get the vaccine because he's had the infection. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. Yeah. So is there are there any downsides? Or, you know, so the people who are hesitant about this, one of the things they're often told is, well, whatever, just get the vaccine anyway to make sure to make sure you're safe. Would there be a downside in getting a vaccine for something that you already have immunity to? Probably no. Um, but remember, when you get the second dose of the two dose regimen, it can knock you down. Sure. So getting the infection is like getting a dose. Yes. So uh, the uh, medical establishment doesn't know what to do with people that already have the infection. And they say, oh, I don't know, just get two doses. Um, I tell people you can get one or if you choose not to get vaccinated, that's reasonable, too. We've got to start respecting people who choose not to get the vaccine instead of demonizing them. That's for sure. So what do the data show us? I mean, I know you've kind of cited some of the studies here. If Is it possible for us to compare previously infected people with vaccinated people and the rate at which they have what we're referring to as breakthrough infections? That is, people who get vaccinated who still get infected anyway, we're told that's what's called a breakthrough infection. Is there a difference among those people who've been infected and then recovered? There's no difference natural immunity works and there's more data on natural immunity than there is on vaccinated immunity because natural immunity has been around longer we've had the infection for 15 months and even if you go to europe where in italy they had an outbreak before the u.s they're not seeing reinfections in the united states we're not seeing reinfections and when they do happen they're rare and their symptoms are mild or they're asymptomatic You get breakthrough infections with natural immunity and you get breakthrough infections with vaccinated immunity. They're mild and often asymptomatic. Now, one of the other pieces of the conversation that's normally had around this subject is, well, we just don't know how long the antibodies last. So therefore, that's the reason to get the vaccine. But my understanding of that, if you answer that question and you're an actual scientist or a doctor, that's sort of an anti-science answer, isn't it? Because that doesn't actually address the way the body handles immunity with any precision. That's sort of just like, talking about the frontline fighters who are only called up when your body confronts the virus, right? That's right. When you get vaccinated immunity, it's probably lifelong. I don't buy this. We're going to need boosters, you know, every Monday morning when we show up at work. It's probably lifelong immunity. When you get natural immunity from a severe COVID infection, you have natural immunity that's probably lifelong. The data are in, and it shows in Denmark that six tenths of one percent of people who who had COVID ever get the infection a second time. And that's when they're around it all the time. That's in healthcare workers who were around it all the time. Now we've got one tenth the infection load in society that we had just four months ago. And we have fewer daily COVID cases now than we have flu daily flu cases in a mild flu year. It's all very good news. Everything's trending in the right direction. I saw the White House yesterday indicated that over half of the country is now fully vaccinated. That is, they've received the full course of the vaccine, depending on which one they opted for. Uh, In combination with those who have natural immunity, is it safe to say we are nearing herd immunity or already are there? Here's my beef with the White House, Vince. They ignore natural immunity, which changes the path to herd immunity. 
When you ignore the fact that half of the unvaccinated have natural immunity, guess what? The, go- the path to get to 85% immunity in the population is much more difficult. It's much more dire. If you ignore natural immunity, the only way to get to 85% population immunity is to have mandates for the vaccine and require kids to get them and convert those who are hesitant and demonize them. That is why you're hearing a totally different story from public health officials that ignore natural immunity. Right now in America, 62% of all adults have been vaccinated and half of the unvaccinated have natural immunity. That means 80 to 85% of adults in America today have immunity. The virus can't jump around in a restaurant, in a gathering, at a sporting event when eight or eight, eight and a half people out of every 10 are protected. They're barriers. Yes. And, and that's called herd immunity. And we're there. And they serve as a fire break for that virus getting around. So the yes. CDC right. has uh, not put any information up on its website. I, I looked this weekend uh, for people who have had the virus and recovered and have natural immunity. Why not? Why the C- I thought the CDC was supposed to be an organization that revolves around science and scientific guidance. Why exclude such important information from the CDC's website? This is the most slow, reactionary, political CDC in American history. And they're taking talking points from the White House, and it's a disgrace. And I never thought I'd say this, but please ignore the CDC guidance. And let's make it very simple. Live a normal life unless you're unvaccinated and do not have the infection, in which case you need to be careful and evaluate your own individual risk. I encourage everyone to get the vaccine, but if you choose not to get it because you had the infection in the past, that's reasonable. I don't think we're going to need boosters, but ultimately one of the greatest failings of our medical leadership will, will look back and say that they ignored natural immunity, which prolonged the pandemic because they, they only see it in terms of vaccination rates towards an 85 percent goal. And that's not a, a, a correct uh, a calculation to get there. Doc, Dr. Marty Bocchieri, before we send you off here, I want to ask one last thing. I want, I want to address a talking point that's come up ever since the CDC said it's safe for vaccinated people to take their masks off. Um, there have been quite a few people who've pushed back, especially in the mainstream press, saying, well, what about, you know, for children, children, uh, you know, like we need to protect our kids from this virus. And if someone is walking around without a mask, I don't know if they're unvaccinated. My kid might not be protected. Is that fear overwrought? Well, at some point we have to live our lives. And to date, there's never been a documented case of a fully vaccinated person transmitting the virus when they don't have any symptoms. So, I mean, we got to put things in perspective. Uh, the, I think it's reasonable for kids to get the vaccine, not so much to prevent against death, because that's infinitesimally rare in a healthy kid. Kids with pre-existing conditions are at risk and they should get vaccinated. But it's really the, the, the choice to get the vaccine for kids is really to prevent the inflammatory response syndrome, what we call MISC. And that has happened. There's 10,000 cases, we estimate, in the United States from COVID, it's, it's, it's something kids survive, but it is an ICU stay. It's a hospitalization for kids. Yeah. And so the reason to get the vaccine is to prevent that inflammatory response. But remember, again, if you don't believe in natural immunity, then you think we got to get, you know, kids vaccinated in order to get to 85 percent. And the reality is we're already at 80 to 85 percent. Yeah. Thank God there's people out there like you who are actually focused on the science and because there's been way too much politics played here uh, to our detriment. Dr. Marty McCary, professor at Johns Hopkins uh, and author of The Price We Pay, What Broke American Healthcare and How to Fix It. Great to have you with us, sir. I hope you can come back soon. All right. Thanks so much, Ben. All right.